let's wrap back up to to malicious and go to to J Max to talk about five star defenses. Out of the whole tournament, I think my favorite uh, Nat Five defense would probably still be ours, and it would be Nana Nora Charlotte. A lot of people inside malicious alone in the guild argued um, about using the unit Charlotte. I think it did really well, and I, I personally ruined up that defense, and I thought it was really good. Until we started one-manning it. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I, we understand, I guess, um, you can one-man it, but at the same time, I still think that defense is really strong, especially, um, I think a lot of people went into it with Galleon, Tiana, Poseidon, or something similar like that. Mm -hmm. If you miss an attack bar on any of the Ashir or even Charlotte, automatically, I think uh, we have a way better chance if Ashir buffs, Tiana's spin is not going to do enough damage, just, uh, something like that. So I tested it over like 150 times into the defense, and I saw like what was wrong with it. But at the same time, SSA did find a figure out is they can one man or two man the unit, uh, the defense mm. as well, but not with 100% success, obviously. B, I saw you laughing when Jeff brought that up. Do you, did you uh, fight that? Do you want to talk about that at all? Um, yeah, so I mean, I hit it four times before we figured out that we could kind of like du duo and solo it. So uh, I, again, a lot of respect to Malicious, especially to Charles, who uh, who I understand came up with their kind of like map plan. But in the beginning of Siege, we were like, wait, this defense doesn't look that good, but Malicious must know something. Malicious must know something that we don't. So we, we were afraid to kind of just jump into it right away. So we kind of left those bases untouched for a really long time. And then when we finally went into them, we we're like, Oh my god, we just got baited this whole time. We were too respectful of the yep. defense. And we actually did close the gap a decent amount, but obviously, uh, you know, Malicious played the map very well and they had a, secured a solid lead from the beginning stages. So, you know, it really was kind of a futile. <laughs> yeah, we were playing catch up. <laughs> Good word. Itchy, did you want to share your favorite Nat 5 defense? There weren't too many. I still think, honestly, the, the buff to Nana, while she is seen everywhere, I think it was pretty good for defense. Um, just because, you know, it's a unit that is like kind of anti-cleave, has a decent leader skill, um, and so like anything really to do with Nana, um, she can also be built on uh, different ways, more damage focused, more tanks so that she doesn't die and she revives an ally instead. Um, so I think anything really with Nana um, is, uh, is pretty good. Awesome. Okay, let's head over to, to Mithril. Let's start with Carrie. Similar to Itchy, uh, I don't think any of the Mad 5 defenses are so great right now. Maybe Theo or Savannah, because it's incredibly hard to manipulate an AI of a unit who can AoE defense break, and Theo doesn't necessarily have anything that he must attack on the field. I, I appreciate it. Zant? Mm. You talked about your favorite earlier. Is there anything else that you wanted to add on, or should we just go with that one? Um, I mean, that's probably my favorite, just because it's pretty funny when people oh. lose to it. Because I, I, everyone who everyone who does like I hate like the way they lose. It's very comical, and so I, I, I like I like that because it's one of the few things I think that I get. It, and I'm like I don't know if I want to hit this ten times, <laughs> mm -hmm. but obviously, no no guild's gonna have twenty five guild there in Mukuls. If you do hit me up, um, we can collaborate. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Mithril. Uh, let's go uh, to SSA. Uh, let's start with the face. Um, honestly, I look at five star defenses now, and I feel like there's nothing particularly too strong. A lot of defenses that guilds running are like overused, or overplayed. There's not much, nothing too new except for Mali's defenses. Props to them. Um, personally, I have a Zerath, and I like the dynamic of incorporating Zerath and Savannah together. So. Uh, defense I currently have up right now is Zerath, Fire Ken, and Savannah. Um, so the idea is obviously to just burst and do huge damage in like one suit. But even I recognize the flaws of the defense, so it's not something I'll particularly spam if I was to suggest to a guild. Not that it's free to play anyway, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Zerath required. laughs> it's a pretty big barrier yeah. to entry. <laughs> if I had to pick a favorite five star defense, uh, there's one five star defense of, of ours from the tournament which got zero losses, and that is our Geldnir Draco Odin. Uh, Malicious was too scared to hit it, so zero losses, zero wins, but zero losses. You know, I'll take it. <laughs> we had one Sylvia Draco 
uh, Odin as a filler because we didn't have enough Gildners. But the, the concept was basically like, oh, LD33 lead, Draco, Odin. It's basically kind of like the, I guess, similar to like the Draco, uh, Odin Theo, or, you know, some of the other Odin defenses that other guilds were running. So the thought process was basically like, if this is a speed check. If, if you can outspeed a 33 Draco, then, you know, you'll win. But if you can't, then you'll lose. So it's not really that good of a defense, but it kind of like, it's kind of like a rune check. It's a speed check. So people might be a little bit uncomfortable hitting it. Um, we also placed it on the tower, which is most likely to not get hit. So we're like, even if this isn't, a, this isn't a good defense, they probably won't hit this tower anyways. So at the very least, we'll get extra points from it, from the, from it being on the map. Yeah. Um, I would probably go with Nana, Joga, and Savannah. I mean, we ran that last tournament. I mean, it's definitely seen its usage all around, but I think one of the things there is like the AI. So you can build it differently, but you can't ever predict the AI there. All three of them never know when to use their skills. You can get a Jogun skill three into a skill two. You know, you can definitely get really lucky there. Um, you can get procs with Nana. So you can build it different ways. And I think, you know, we tested a lot of Odins going in and it, we just seemed like those were a lot more counterable, even though they were brand new than Jogun. We were just hoping that kind of like the unpredictability would throw people off. The Odins really, um... If you weren't prepared for them, they would snag a few wins. But the guilds that performed really well against the Odins, you know they prepared really well. They spent a lot of time with preparation. Like, I know I was kind of watching over the, the myth Apoch Siege, and they ran Odins both sides, and their win rates were absolutely unbelievable on both sides for that Siege. And that's because they both prepared the, the defenses. So, you know, when we thought about running Odins, we'll, you know, when we were going into Mithril, we were just thinking there's no chance we can run Odin's into them after what they just did against Apoch, so we have to go back to Old Faithful, which is the Nana Joe Gun Savs, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I think Odin's are, Odin's, are, Odin's, are, Odin's are a good surprise factor. I think, like, they, they shouldn't be discounted, but if, if you prepare well, they can be quite easily counterable. That's, it, is a, it is a preparation tool. But leading up to the tournament, there were so many Odin defense. A lot of people were pretty well prepared into Odin's as well, I would say. Yeah, so I feel like that's just an awkward spot that it got. Odin's really insane. Just everybody had counters to it just because we spent a couple weeks in regular season fighting it, right? I think every, like as everyone here knows, it just requires way too much setup. And especially when you can't rely on the AI, it's like, it's never, you're never sure if it's going to get to the five stacks. But when it does get to the five stacks, thanks to a proc or something like that, it's going to get that win. But do you really want to just leave it up to like that chance? We are at the point with answers, yes. <laughs> that was our defense team. <laughs> <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> it's like, we got nothing better. Let's just roll the dice. <laughs> A phase, were you gonna were you gonna add on to that? Oh yeah, I I mean just basically what B said. We did like a lot of testing on Odin just because of the balance patch. We did expect a lot of Odin defenses throughout the first half of the tourney, just because we strongly felt like Odin was not the true defense people were going to run on defense throughout the tourney. So later on when we had some real matches, defenses when they unveiled themselves, I'm just saying that Odin was, they fell off hard. That's what I truly felt. So I, I'll just have one more one more question for you. What monster do you want to see buffed in the future to be a higher contributor, maybe enter into the meta in Siege in the future? Uh, and you can take a second to think about that. And then Jeff, when you're ready, you can take it away. Don't steal mine, Jeff. <laughs> I would ask I Nerf, exactly, but I know that it's I know exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to say Dorothy. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, this is biased, obviously, because I, I've had one since this is my first LD Nat 5 is Shazam. Shazam's okay, but overall, I do believe that all the beasts do need a leader skill. I really do think so. And with a leader skill, it might help a lot to make those defenses. You're going to see a lot more Ritesh's, uh, and we did use Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh, Kumar's, Rahul's and stuff like that. I actually, um, on that note of what you're saying with the Beast Monks, I also think maybe their scaling should be looked at again and reconsidered, um, because they were kind of buffed to be fully invested into HP when um, efficiency was less of a thing. And I do think that another thing that hurts them is you look at and compare it to something like Vigor, it has dual scaling from HP and attack. It actually, I'd argue, benefits the variance and the damage that you can output at a high level versus, um, the beast monks who are locked into one source of damage. So like maybe adding a very minor defense scaling to supplement the 
HP scaling to signify them as the Nat5 Bruiser and help that identity grow and really support efficiency, the value of efficiency on that unit. I mean, I was going to say Beast Monks as well. Ritesh was my first ever Nat5. <laughs> Just instead of monster, I think that the big thing Siege needs is more leader skills, more leader skill options. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, in the previous seasons, you never saw Harmonia Kinky because um, it didn't really have a leader skill. But after, um, you know, the Heart Magicians gained Guild War leader skills, uh, it opened up a lot of more options. Um, and so, I don't know, it, like, you know, if they changed units where, you know, let's say Arena leader skills also counted in Guild content too, or something, just... It needs more diversity because there's a reason why you see a lot of the same units all the time. And it's either because their kit is too good or they have a really good leader skill. And so like a bigger diversity of leader skill would definitely open up more options on defense. Yeah, it would be really nice if uh, especially more units would have speed lead in Siege. And at least for me, I would prefer more units to have AoE defense breaks too, which makes it harder to manipulate AI. That's about it. I think a fire unit could be really good for that. I don't think there's many AoE defense break fire units that aren't Helena and she just dies in human I form. can only think of Balanus and that's it. I think, I um, think, of I think another, another one to note, um, but I do think that she could probably use a touch up regarding base stats and stuff is um, Wahi. But I think her activation rate is too low because it's like a 30% chance, which isn't really... Yeah, defense is RNG, but 30% chance is fairly low. So like that... That would maybe she could maybe be that thing because she also attack buffs, so she could be applying more pressure if um, she had a higher chance of getting the defense break off. Another five star, I might be crazy, but I think it'll just make Chimeras vibe on defense, please. Um, and if a four <laughs> star, I like the Dice Magicians. Um, I I, oh. I really like the Wind one especially, so make the Wind one vibe on defense. I yeah, love more. yeah, that's. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I guess originally for me, I was also going to say the Beast Monks. And I guess the change that I would have suggested was to actually change their base speed from 96 to 102 and 103. And then also, uh, shout out to all the Rahul owners. Give it the Wounds treatment and give it 15 speed awakening. So it would be the actual viable stripper. Uh, mm. But I'm going to be greedy and I'm going to be a scumbag and I'm going to say Tian Lang needs a buff. <laughs> what? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think they're, they're oh, oh, so I think, you know what, we need to, we need to buff it back up. Cause you know, it's, it's really the only unit in the game that's like counter to attack bar gain, but it doesn't even really counter attack bar gain anymore. So it feels like it's lost its purpose. So I feel like it deserves a buff, a really big one. So I can get back to G3 and RTA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pushing my Tian Lang agenda, but I do oh, agree in the sense that like a swift bird does not get countered by by Tian Lang. So like I, I do agree with you there. Um but the rest of it, it's he's still great. He's still great. Hey a man can dream. <laughs> um I think for me I really like the mages and I think Momo could be a viable option in Siege. I think it's got the kit. I think she can do everything. It just needs to to figure out a way to like make her get stacks faster or something like that. And I think she'd be like a very good Siege unit that could come and kind of take the place of Savannah, hopefully. But I think she's like really close and I'd like to see her um, buffed a little bit. And then and when it comes to four stars, I think I'm hoping a new two way can kind of come out like Vigor and just like take over the four star meta. Cause we just need something like extremely toxic. So your win rate isn't like 98% <laughs> anymore. We need you to bring it down. <laughs> And just like defense break, you know, attack speed buff, like anti crit, like we need something like that to come out. All well, the ideas are gone. <laughs> Gods are taking everything. I was thinking, I was initially thinking beast monks, and then I was going to talk about a new two A to kind of help out the four star meta. Um, but I think the main thing that I think we spoke a bit earlier on is mainly to make defenses more viable is by nerfing some of the core offenses. So I want to see some sort of change to like windy and tractor to kind of bring more units back into the game. Um, you know, we spoke about fire units not being viable right now. So, you know, trying to, you know, dumb Windy down a little bit so we can kind of expand on the meta. Cause otherwise we're just gonna keep seeing water and wind unit combinations on defenses. So if we can kind of get a bit more breathing room and, and make some of these units a little bit less viable on offense and make defenses a little bit more expansive. 
Yeah, I'd agree on that. I think Windy is a core issue because you never you didn't see Tractor nearly as like prevalent before Windy. I think Windy enables every weakness of Tractor. Windy covers. Oh, you don't provide utility. I provide utility. Oh, well, you're kind of slow. I'm, I'm well. That's great. I give you speed buff. That's true. Well, guys, this is um. This has been a really fun discussion. Thank you so much for spending time with me. This has been incredibly insightful. I really like your guys' discussion. It was great seeing all the folks here who have been here in the past and great to see the fresh faces too. Um, uh, congratulations again to Mally on the win and uh, thank you all so much for being here.